Welcome to Northern Strands, your official supplier of Vitali International chain hoists and lever hoists. This instructional video will be taking place at Northern Strands main warehouse facility in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Lever hoist usage. Ensure hook safety latches are around the lifting point before usage. Without a load on the hoist, the chain length can be adjusted. Set the selector to neutral and use the hand wheel to engage free wheel mode. With tension on the load side of the chain, engage the hoist by twisting the hand wheel clockwise and pushing down. Select the direction you want the load to move and ratchet the handle. Lever Hoist Disassembly In this video, we disassemble a 3.2 ton lever hoist with a 1.5 meter fall. This procedure should be the same for all Vitali lever hoists, but feel free to contact us if you find yourself unable to follow along. Here is a list of tools you will need for assembly and disassembly. Let's begin. Place the hoist on a workbench with the lever side facing up. The lever and the housing below it contains the braking mechanism. The castle nut can be removed after the cotter pin is pulled out. With the selector in the neutral position, twist the hand wheel counterclockwise and pull out on it. This frees the hand wheel and the twisting spring below it. Remove cam from the driving shaft. Remove the bolt and washer from the top of the outer face of the lever, as well as the two nuts and washers from the backside. Separate the outer portion of the lever. Remove the changeover pawl, spring shaft, and spring from the rear of the lever handle assembly. Spin the changeover gear counterclockwise to detach it from the pinion shaft. Your hoist may be equipped with an overload limiter rather than the standard changeover gear. The disassembly process is the same. On the lever side, remove the four acorn nuts and washers from the main body. Pull off the breakover assembly. Use a hammer to tap off if necessary. Free the ratchet disc and disc hub by pulling them straight up and off the driving shaft. Extract the snap rings from pawls. Snap rings should not be reused. During assembly, make sure you have new ones. The pawls and the pawl spring can now be removed from the pawl pin. Flip the hoist over. On the back side are four acorn nuts and washers. Remove these and the gear case cover.
The socket used will vary depending on the size of the hoist. Take off the gear case assembly. Now remove the spur gear assembly, driving shaft, drive shaft washer, and lastly the load gear. By pulling out the top hook shaft from the main frame, the top hook assembly can be detached. Now separate the gear side plate assembly and the pinion shaft roller bearing. Lightly tap out the caged roller bearing from the gear side plate assembly. Remove guide rollers and the chain stripper. The chain can now be removed from the load sheave. Remove the load sheave. Tap out the caged roller bearing from the lever side plate assembly. By removing the lock nut from the bottom hook assembly, the bottom hook shaft can be removed. With the hoist disassembled, all parts can be cleaned, degreased, and air dried. Measure hooks to ensure that there is no stretching or twisting. Inspect pawls for rust buildup and make sure they have a full range of motion. Check load sheaves and gears for cracks or excess wear. Inspect the chain for stretching, weld spatter, rust, corrosion, and any visible damage. Ensure the nameplate is legible and the warning tag is still affixed. After cleaning and final inspection of all the parts, the hoist can be reassembled. Here is a list of parts you should have for reassembly. Lever Hoist Assembly Lubricate one of the roller bearings and press it into the lever side plate assembly. Gently tap bearing into place. Slide the load sheave into the roller bearing and twist a few times to distribute lubricant. Position the chain stripper on the lower right hand corner bolt. Use the alignment hole to make sure it seats correctly. Then slide the guide rollers on the lower left hand and upper right hand corner bolts. Ensure the chain weld is facing outwards on load sheave. Move the guide rollers over chain. Lubricate the remaining caged roller bearing and tap it into the gear side plate. The bearing should be facing load sheave.
secure the side plate over corner bolts and load sheave. Lubricate and install the load gear on the load sheave splines. Ensure the load gear is placed with groove for washer facing up. Make sure to install the washer on top of the load gear before installation of the pinion shaft. Lubricate and install pinion shaft, taking care to only lubricate the part of the shaft that will come in contact with the load sheave and not on the threads on the outermost end. Mount side gears ensuring that the alignment marks are properly positioned and both pointing in the same direction. Now fasten the load hook by inserting the load hook shaft. Apply a liberal coating of lubricant on the gears and position the gear case cover on the corner bolts securing it with four acorn nuts and washers. Apply anti-seize to the stay bolts. Flip the hoist over to the lever side. Clean off any grease that may come in contact with the brake housing side plate during assembly. Lubricate pawl shafts and reinstall pawl springs, pawls and snap rings. Ensure that you use new snap rings each time you reassemble. Insert the friction plate and ratchet disc on the load shaft. Twist the pawls out of the way to allow discs to fall into place against the brake housing side plate and take care to make sure that no grease or lubricant comes in contact with the friction plate. Fasten the brake housing cover with four acorn nuts and washers. Install the changeover gear by twisting it clockwise into position on the load shaft, aligning it so that the two lobes are in line with the axis of the lever. Reposition the changeover pawl, spring shaft, and spring back into the lever assembly.
Position the select pawl on the pinion shaft, aligning it diagonally with the lobes on the changeover gear. Secure the lever assembly by replacing the bolt and washer on the top of the assembly and then ratcheting on the two nuts and washers on the back side of the handle. Remember to coat the bolts with anti-seize. Place the cam on driving shaft. Place the free chain wheel and brake spring, securing it by flipping the hoist out of neutral. Replace the hand wheel in twisting spring. Turning it clockwise about 120 degrees will seat this mechanism. Spin on the castle nut and secure it with a fresh cotter pin. Install bottom hook assembly onto load chain. Use a ratchet to affix lock nut. This concludes this video. Please feel free to contact us or visit our webpage if you have any further questions. Thank you.